Welcome back to the bench everyone. Today I'm going to talk about mitigating distortion, thermal issues, and other problems with a transistor amplifier. A single element, meaning it just has one active component, one transistor. Before I get on to that, I want to thank everyone for the subscribership or even just the viewership. I had some goals that I wanted to reach 10,000 subscribers and 2 million channel views by the end of the year, but I've already surpassed that early in November. So that is great. I really appreciate that. Now I am having a problem with YouTube. The last two videos I put up got demonetized. I don't know why. You know, for the type of video I do, it's not really controversial. So I'm not sure why they were demonetized. But I put up the um, counterfeit video about the TDA 2050, and it was demonetized. I, I thought maybe it had something to do with the word counterfeit or something in it. Uh, but I challenged it, had it reviewed, and they gave me back full monetization. So then I did the little tube headphone amp. And that got demonetized after I put it up. I don't see why that would be demonetized at all. But I challenged it, had them review it, and I got full monetization back. So am I going to have to fight this every time now? Well, the problem is, when they demonetize me, it's right when my video is new and getting all the views. So, you know, I don't make anything when they uh, make it demonetized. So, I don't know. Hopefully, YouTube fixes their problems. If you like science videos like I do, you probably heard that Cody's Lab has two strikes on his channel. It's a great channel. It's a big channel. I know he certainly makes a lot of money. You know, judging by my channel, which is probably like a hundredth the size of his, and uh, yeah, he must make a lot of money doing what he's doing there. And that's a real kick in the pants to uh, lose your channel like that. He can't upload with two strikes. And if he gets a third strike, they take his channel down. So I'm confident they'll uh, reach some sort of solution to this issue. But, you know, YouTube's doing some bad things to their, their content creator. You know, YouTube provides the platform and the content creators fill it up with stuff so you know we need youtube and they need us so yeah i hope they get their situation squared away okay let's go on with our little project here leading off with the transistor i have this little circuit set up here ignore the rest of this that's not part of this little demonstration here is the schematic of that very circuit I have a KSC 1845 NPN bipolar junction transistor with a 1K collector resistor. And I have a biasing network on the base consisting of a 100K resistor and a 10K resistor. 2.2 microfarad capacitor is a decoupling for the signal that I connect here. That's so it does not disturb my bias settings. Right now I'm testing some DC parameters. There is nothing connected to the input or the output. Just um, get the meter connected to this point. So what I want to do is set the collector voltage here to be about one half the supply voltage. The reason for that is when I put a signal on the input, you know, it's going to swing positive and swing negative. And I want the output to be able to swing up and down without clipping. So if I had this bias wrong and it was too close to the positive rail, it would clip on that positive rail first. So you want to have it about half the supply voltage. I have the power supply set up to 8.2 volts and the collector voltage is around 4 volts. So it's roughly half the supply voltage. You might be asking, why did I use 8.2 volts? Well, I kind of cheated a little bit. I could have taken a potentiometer and put it here and twiddle it until I got this set right at whatever voltage I was using. But it was just as easy to adjust the supply voltage. So this was about at halfway point. 
Well, that might get you thinking, isn't this thing sensitive to the supply voltage? Well, yes, it is. Let me drop the voltage down to 8 volts. And look how the collector voltage goes up. That's because I'm biasing the transistor on less and less and the collector resistor is pulling that voltage up. So if I go down to 7 volts, now this is about 6. So now the uh, bias point is shifted severely. There's only 1 volt from the collector to the supply rail and 6 volts to the negative side. Now if I set the voltage too high, let's just go up to 9 volts. And look at that. It causes the transistor to be over biased and it pulls the collector voltage down too much. So this circuit has one problem right now. It's very sensitive to supply voltage. And another thing, if I touch the transistor, look at it. Look at that change. I take my finger away and it goes back up. I blow on it, it will change. You can see how it changes. Let's try another transistor. It's the exact same KSC1845 part number. Let me plug one in here. And this will stabilize in a minute. As the temperature reaches equilibrium, the transistor will stabilize. But notice the voltage is different than the other one. It's not too far off, but it is different. So another issue is a couple things. Well, thermal stability, you know, if if I had some free spray or something hot, it would really shift the bias point. So as a thermal issue and transistor parameters, you know, transistors do vary quite a bit from the same part number. They vary in parameters a little bit. So that is also an issue with the circuit. Now let's put a signal on the input and take a look at the results on the oscilloscope. Okay, I have a signal hooked up, and we'll see how this thing performs. Let's turn that down. There's clipping. It's really ugly clipping. Holy distortion, Batman. But at lower amplitude, it's not as bad. Let's check distortion here. Okay. There's the 1% pilot signal. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Goes off the screen. We have like a two, four, six, about eight percent second harmonic, and a tiny little, like half a percent third harmonic. Look familiar? Look like that tube video, that tube headphone amp video I shot before. Well, tubes and transistors have what's known as a non-linear transfer characteristic. They are not linear devices by default. So they're going to have some distortion to them. And that is another problem with this circuit as it stands. There is a lot of distortion. Now let's check gain. So turn this back on, turn this off. So I'll set this to one volt, as close as I can get it, and about there's one volt. 
and I'll move the probe to the base of the transistor and there's nothing a lot of noise let me short out the uh, scope real quick yeah I think we're uh, yeah we're at the bottom of the scopes measurement capability I can uh, there's a filter I can set to get rid of that but I'm just going to get a quick measurement uh, there's about we'll just say eight millivolts turn it back down back on the collector so we'll punch in one divided by 0 0.008 so this has a gain of 125 so yeah pretty high gain for the circuit so what can we do this the circuit has a lot of gain but it has tons of other problems sensitive to the supply voltage thermal sensitivity uh, sensitive to the transistor parameters and that includes a decent amount of distortion so what can we do to fix that okay so what I've done here is add a 100 ohm emitter resistor into the circuit and let's see how that affects the transistor I did set the supply voltage to 14 volts the reason for doing that is so I can use these resistors I don't have to worry about getting the bias right um, you know trying to find the correct value of resistor our collector voltage is not centered but you know it's not far off enough that it's going to be an issue so we'll just run with this so now you know, I can touch the transistor and it doesn't affect it at all the thermal stability is much improved let's pull this out try another transistor nine point oh six let's see what see what the other one was nine point I think it was eight point something yeah it's less affected by the different transistors and if I adjust the supply voltage see I'm at 14.2 go down to it changes slightly but it's nothing near like what it was before not nearly as sensitive okay let's take a look at the signal now well pretty much what we had before let's uh, uh, look at the distortion there's our 1% pilot let's turn this up so we can see it a little bit better and look at that you know about two graticules is one percent and these are like what 0.25 percent now we had that huge eight percent second order harmonic that's gone and the third order is very small as well so that really changed the distortion performance made a huge improvement in distortion performance the amplifier is no longer tied to the transistor parameters uh, let's check the uh, gain turn that off okay so we're running at uh, let's get that to one volt that's good and I'll move the probe over to the input and turn that up 109 so yeah it's roughly very roughly a gain of 10 so we gave up a whole bunch of gain for a vast improvement in everything else so in this arrangement the gain is going to be roughly the ratio of these two resistors which is about 10 as we figured before so now you might be asking how does adding a resistor in the emitter circuit improve all of these issues we had before but well, what's happening is it's causing negative feedback 
and it's pretty interesting how that works. You have to think of this circuit as a ladder of potentials. You're stepping up from ground potential to the emitter, from the emitter to collector, collector to the supply voltage. Now if we have 14 volt supply, we were having about 9 at the collector. So that's 5 volts across this. So we have 5 milliamps flowing through this circuit. Now yeah, there is some coming from the base in the emitter circuit, but we can ignore that for this simple calculation. So there's about 5 milliamps of current flowing through this resistor. And if you do the math, that comes out to half a volt across the resistor. So now let's add a sine wave signal to the input. As the signal swings positive, it's going to increase the current flowing through the base emitter junction, turning the transistor on more. When that happens, more current flows through the transistor, thus through the emitter resistor. When you have more current flowing through a resistor, you have a larger voltage drop across that resistor. And if you remember what I said, think of this as a ladder of potentials. So from ground to this side of the resistor, you're going to have a higher voltage. And the base to emitter junction has, you know, it's like a diode. It has 600 millivolts across it. So the voltage at the base is also going to increase. So as this increases, this also increases. It's actually trying to counter that input signal. Apologies, my camera battery decided to quit. But anyway, the converse is true as well. When the sine wave swings negative, that means less current's going to flow through the transistor, less through the resistor, lowering this voltage. So again, it's countering the effect of our input signal. And this is a form of negative feedback. What that does is reduce the gain significantly. And it also reduces significantly, doesn't quite completely eliminate it, but it reduces all these other problems. The distortion, the thermal issues, transistor parameters, supply voltage effects. It makes it a much more stable, usable circuit. But again, at the cost of gain. So how do we get back gain? So what we do is we cascade more stages onto the amplifier. That's why in an amplifier you'll see two, three, or even more stages. So if we had gains of 10 in each stage, those multiply. So if we had another stage, we'd have a gain of 100. So we would gain back a lot of that at the cost of additional circuitry. We could also do another thing and add global negative feedback and that reduces these effects even further. In the next video I'm going to show how this is done with a vacuum tube. It's really pretty much the same. Well I hope you found this interesting and thank you for watching.